Gordon, can you shed a little bit of light on this? What is happening here? Well, uh, if the world's kind of turned upside down. I mean, it was listening to Phil. It's like, reminds you of two dogs chasing a bus. I'm not sure the winner is the one that catches the bus on the, on the spirit deal. Obviously, a lot of fluctuations in the marketplace because there's a lot of fluctuations in the economy internationally as well as domestically. So it all kind of manifests itself to uncertainty and flying today is certainly an uncertain business. So if you were still back running Continental, would you be looking for a merger here or how would you play this? I'd probably want a psychiatrist, but... Uh, <laughs> It's assuming I'm, I'm that's not, not an option, what would you do? <laughs> I'm not sure, Eamon, that, 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 that merging is actually, mergers are deals. An airline is not a deal. So whatever happens, you've got to run this organization and hostile takeovers don't precipitate really efficiencies and good thinking and goodwill. So you're handicapping yourself because of the contested nature of this deal. It's not a friendly deal. And it's not going to turn out well, I don't think, for anyone. Well, and the reversal of fortune has been fascinating, where Spirit was once the most hated airline in the U.S. Now it's JetBlue, according to the Wall Street Journal's polling, at least. So uh, now you have Spirit fans who are worried about what could happen here. But, Gordon, can we pivot and talk yeah. more broadly about what's happening uh, with this travel chaos that, you know, we now have Senator Sanders calling on the industry to pay fines for late fight flights, Pete Buttigieg. Uh, is tweeting that they need to have better customer service. We're hearing <laughs> anecdotally from people whose flights for the weekend are already canceled, delayed, or they're literally just getting apologies from the airlines before they've even traveled because it's an acknowledgement that it's just going to be so bad. Well, it, it is difficult, Kelly, and I'm not sure Pete Buttigieg knows the front end from the back of an airplane, so whether it's <laughs> going to be helpful or not. The operations uh, are affected by staffing. That's including the FAA staffing at centers, in route centers, control centers. It's certainly affected by pilot availability, which the government changed the structure of the availability of pilots. So you're seeing a bottleneck in the supply chain, I guess you would call it, uh, getting your airplanes out on, on time every day. And quite frankly, uh, the availability of equipment. So you've, your maximum, everything is running at maximum. And it doesn't leave a lot of room for error. And it, any hiccup along the way shows up across your system. And that's what's causing the frustration. So the back end of the plane is the one with the tail on it, right? <laughs> Just so we're clear. You know, you're getting on to something. But that's <laughs> what a lot of people know about the airline business is that the front from the back. Let, let, me ask, let me ask you this, though. I mean, you know, it's been a year since demand came surging back post-COVID for the airline industry, right? I mean, no. You can understand how everything got completely out of whack and they just didn't anticipate everything coming back as quickly as it did and they had scaled down. And so naturally there would be some period of chaos when they tried to get back up and running. But a year later, we're still in this problem. I fly all the time and it's not getting much better out there. And the question is, are we in some kind of semi-permanent new normal or is this going to normalize over time and we can think of you know going into the fall things will be back to the usual way hey man i i think it will get back to quote normal unquote but at the same time you use so much variability in different nations with different rules and different covid restrictions and different quarantines and and so this turmoil that's in the economy and in the system just doesn't bode well for stability. And of course, an airline got to be stable and on time and reliable. And you're, it's just frustrating to all of us that they can't seem to get things to normal. But normal is defined by what country and by whom today and what, what government. And it changes all the time.